When working with a mesh, sometimes we can't program directly to that mesh body. Sometimes we need to create some geometry, whether it be a surface or a solid, that lays behind the mesh so we can drive our toolpath to that geometry. So in this case, we needed to make some surface bodies that live inside the mesh to make the chimneys a little more manufacturable. If we zoom in here and take a look at this chimney, we can see this is actually made of four individual segments. And that's because this part, when it was modeled, was modeled as if it were a gingerbread house. And of course, if this were gingerbread, you would have four pieces you kind of glue together and call that your chimney. Working with a, a toolpath and master cam, we're not really able to create motion that goes around this inside of the chimney, jumping from these four bodies in a really effective way. So what we ended up doing here was modeling some reference geometry. So we can see here we have this little bore where if I show that inside the chimney, you can see there's just a straight cylindrical surface with a little bit of a, a lid down at the bottom to limit how deep we go. So here's how we created that toolpath in Mastercam. So if we look at this level that has just the isolated clean core bodies, we can go create a unified toolpath. Select our four millimeter ball. In this case, we used a guide curve to project it down the surface. Our machining geometry was the body here. Let's kind of go a little smaller on our step over. And just to see something rough, let's preview this. So we should see a toolpath that kind of works this way down. You can see there's a little purple line here showing we're doing a zigzag. So let's change this over to a spiral toolpath. Now there's going to be no reversals, but of course our tool orientation is no good here, right? So we have to add a little bit of information there. So in this case, we are using a from point. So from this point here. So now the tool always will come from this point while it's machining down here. So this is now a toolpath that looks a little bit more useful, but if we turn on this level that isolates the chimney, we can see that we are still kind of gonna have some problems where we're gouging, you know, where we're taking out the, the snow up top here. And as we get down lower, we're still having some collisions between the tool and the actual chimney body itself. So we can use some collision control strategies to clean all that up. Now, usually we recommend that you use as few collision control strategies as possible because the more collision control strategies you use, the more difficult it is to troubleshoot which one of them could be causing you a problem. In this case, we actually need to use all four. So the first thing we do is we retract the tool along surface normal. Now what this is gonna do is retract the tool along the normal of our drive surface, being a perfect cylinder, we're just gonna retract towards the inside of that cylinder. We wanna retract using all of these chimney bodies as our avoidance areas. Except in this case, I want to allow it to violate by just a little bit. I want to allow it to gouge by 0 0.01 millimeters. So we'll tighten up that a little bit. And when I preview this, we should see something that looks like it follows the contour a little bit more. So you can kind of see if I turn off the level, you can see that we start to get this hourglass shape where we're now waiting till we get under the snow to finish that roof. The next thing we do is we apply our stop surface. So in this case, we've got this level down here, this flat surface down here. So we'll say trim and relink to another avoidance body being that one. And now you can see the toolpath goes way down below here. I'm going to preview that. The toolpath now stops when the cutter touches this flat face. And if I was to backplot this right now, we would see that we are still colliding with the snow. Even though we're coming from that point, as we get down towards the bottom, there are points where, in, if we ran this through Verify, we would see that we're interfering uh, the shank of our tool into some of the body of the snow here. So we can add one more piece of logic now that will automatically tilt the tool away from that snow. So the flutes are never a problem, but the shoulder and the shank Let's say we want to tilt the tool away from the snow and just leave a little bit, let's say 0.15 millimeters or something like that. And what that's going to do is just basically rotate the tool away from that snow. Now remember, we're still kind of gouging the body of the chimney by 0.01 millimeters. So even though this tilt is going to allow us to safely tilt away from the snow, 
we need one more collision control strategy to avoid that gouge that we created. And in this case, just one more retract tool along tool axis. And this time we'll just say retract it along these four. This is what's gonna pull the tool back along that custom axis to zero. Now the reason that I stacked all these collision control strategies on top of each other is because we needed to create a very unique tilt situation on that third tool axis control strategy. If we didn't allow the tool to gouge on the first collision control strategy, we might not have something to pull the tool back to to get zero. So we may actually miss some material. With this strategy, we're actually going through overcutting and then pulling that cut back into something more useful. And now the final product here will show something that looks really nice and is always gonna come from the center of this little snow pocket. It will never violate the snow and it will create a good surface finish all the way down. When working with a mesh like this, it's important to know how to use this clean core strategy using a surface body as your drive surface and then compensating the tool back to the mesh body. It makes for a lot more flexible programming sometimes. There's a lot more power when it comes to programming surfaces over meshes. In this case, we took advantage of all that as well as some cool collision control strategies.